Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Wholesome Dog. Uh, we are so glad that you are joining us this evening. Um, we're going to get started here in just a moment. Um, if if you are joining us, the good news is is that you don't have to uh, you don't have to put your camera on. You don't have to put your audio on. Um, you can sit and you can listen. There is absolutely going to be opportunities for you to ask questions, um, but you can be a very passive uh, participant this evening. So. Um, I want to say hi and I want to welcome you. My name is Julie Lynn Gibbons. I am one of uh, the two co-founders of The Wholesome Dog. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, I'm joined by my uh, co-founder, Wendy Benjavetti. Um, you will see uh, her in terms of uh, her typing. She, I, I'm more of the face and, and she's more the the like actually the the wizard behind the curtain. Uh, that's part of the beauty of what makes our relationship work so well. Um, <clears throat> but you'll be hearing more from Wendy soon. Um, we offer mostly free re resources for pet parents and pet professionals on topics um, from dog nutrition to dog health and wellness to behavior and everything in between. We're really excited uh, because this evening kicks off the first in a series of five uh, events that we're doing uh, around Canine Cancer Awareness Month. I was also uh, informed that February is Heart Health Month. I think that's more of a human thing. Um, but for us, the topic of canine cancer is one that's very near and dear to our heart. Um, and so we're dedicating the entire month of February to talking about it. And so I'm really excited um, that this evening we're kicking off the month uh, with Chen uh, is it now? You know, we talked about how to pronounce your first name, but we didn't talk about how to pronounce your last name. So I should probably ask you that. How do you pronounce your your last name? Uh, Nam Gong. Nam Gong. Okay. <clears throat> and so we're we're joined by uh, Chen. He is the CEO of Oncotect, and Oncotect is doing some really, really groundbreaking, innovative things around um, canine cancer detection. And um, so tonight, that's what we'll be chatting about. Um, so this is how it's going to work. Like I said, we're a pretty chill group of folks here. Um, Wendy and I have over 40, uh, excuse me, 50 years between the two of us, between being um, not only pet parents, of course, but medical advocates, um, health professionals. Um, we're both certified professional canine nutritionists, and we've been probably where you have been or where you may be in terms of being frustrated, wanting to help our dogs as much as we can and feeling frustrated at the lack of available resources or information. Um, and the reality is, is we love our vets. Our vets are grossly uh, underpaid and underappreciated. Um, but also just like our doctors, they don't know it all and, and they can't possibly know it all, right? Just like anyone doctor can't. So we're here to support you and be part of the your dog's health team and uh, along the health journey. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're really glad you're here. Um, after or towards the end of the, the presentation this evening, we are I'm going to talk through some of our upcoming resources or upcoming free events, uh, some resources that we have available for you on our website and other things like that. So stick around. We won't take up too much of your time, but we do want to make sure that we provide you with as much thorough information and opportunity to ask questions. So with that, uh, I will reintroduce Chen. So Chen, welcome. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and Oncotech. Yeah, well, thanks for thanks for having me. It's, it's a great honor to be uh, on this, um, in part of this event. And, you know, we... I've got a short, you know, about 10 minute presentation that I've prepared for you guys. Um, it'll run through kind of the who we are, the work we do, uh, the the importance and benefits of early cancer screening and, you know, just, and we'll have some time for Q&A uh, at the end of, you know, presentation. Uh, and then, you know, feel free to uh, just write down those questions. And hopefully, you know, I've done this, you know, enough times that I can anticipate the questions that are going to be asked. So I'm going to kind of include that during the presentation. So hopefully, you know, my presentation will answer a lot of your questions. Perfect. So again, uh, I really appreciate having me. My name is Chan Namgong. I'm the CEO founder of Oncotech where we develop accessible and non-invasive cancer screen tests for our dogs. 
There are over 84 million dogs in the U.S. alone, and the biggest threat to their health and well-being is cancer. Cancer is a leading cause of death in dogs with 6 to 10 million annual diagnoses. That means one out of every three dogs will develop cancer in their lifetime. The reason why cancer is a leading cause of death is due to late diagnosis. I'm sure many of you unfortunately have had experience where by the time you find out your dog has cancer, it's already too late for any type of effective treatments, supplements, uh, pain management, palliative care, you name it. As any vet oncologist will tell you, the best chance of fighting cancer and extending our dog's lives comes from early detection and diagnosis. But that just isn't a widely available option to date. Current testing methods such as biopsies, ultrasounds, and x-rays are excellent at diagnosing cancer, but are too expensive or impractical for early screening. And blood tests require a hospital visit to perform, and I'm sure you've had some dogs that just don't want to go to the hospital. At Oncotech, we are pioneering a game-changing solution that's not only simple, but practical for at clinic or at-home use. We are introducing the world's first non-invasive at-home cancer screen test for dogs. By using your analysis, we've created a process that's fast, accurate, and affordable. This breakthrough empowers veterinarians and pet parents to take charge of their pet's health, all from the comfort of their homes. Pet parents can order the test at veterinary hospitals, and we are working with over 100 hospitals in the U.S. internationally. And you can also order it online at our website. The urine collection process is quick and hassle-free thanks to our user-friendly urine collection tools and clear instructions. The picture you see on the left, what if you order a test from us on the website, you'll get a test kit. And inside of it, you'll have instruction sheet that explains step-by-step. -step. And you can also scan the QR code to watch instructional videos on how to collect urine sample. You also have a, a couple of paper boats to collect urine in, pipette to transfer urine, and then urine collection preservative tube that doesn't require refrigeration or free, uh, freezing. And then you can use, put the sample that you collected into the biohazard bag and use the same box that came in, seal it. And every kit comes with prepaid return labels. So you don't, we pay for shipping both ways. You don't have to worry about chasing the shipping. So once it's in a seal, put in your mailbox for United States Postal Service and your job is done. Upon collecting a small urine sample, veterinarians and pet parents can send it to our lab in North Carolina and we'll deliver results to you within five business days. Our test results shows an easy to understand risk assessment, categorizing pets as low, moderate, or high risk. We also offer guidance for veterinarians and pet parents on the appropriate next steps. Throughout the entire process, we are dedicated and committed to keeping veterinarians informed and involved. We are not trying to circumvent them. We tr we are, our job is trying to work with them. So when you buy a kit from us on our website, every kit must be activated. And during the activation process, you'll be asked to input your pet's information as well as your veterinarian information. Once we have your veterinarian information, we're going to proactively send them an email and letting them know that you have purchased this kit, what this test is about, and what they can expect from, from us. When the results is ready, we'll share the results with you as well as your veterinarian. So they're in the know of what's going on. The science behind our technology relies on these little guys. They are microscopic nematodes called C. elegans. You may have heard that dogs can detect human cancer. Well, they can do that because cancer cells produce a very particular smell that's different from normal cells. And dogs can tell the difference between two. Well, we are using similar signs in that these little creatures have an incredible sense of smell with even more olfactory receptors than dogs despite their small size. So much so that they can actually detect cancerous metabolites when exposed to urine that contains them. Our novel patent pending process is able to quantify their olfactory neuronal response with high accuracy, which enables us to accurately assess the patient's risk of cancer. Our study was published in the academic journal Frontiers in Veterinary Science in August 22 and has received much support and validation from numerous veterinarians and scholars interested in this field. To date, we've tested over 700 patients, dogs of all shapes and sizes, and we've been proven to accurately detect the four most common treatable canine cancers at 83% sensitivity, which is true positive, 
and 96% specificity, which is true negative. And these results compare favorably with competitive blood tests, but with no needles, our pet-friendly approach is a complete game changer. This is the, the, the main, the content of the report that we sent to veterinarians. We have two versions of report, one for pet parent, and one for veterinarians. For pet parent version is a lot simpler. It, sh it shows the risk level and the, what the next step should be. And the veterinarian version, we include more information like the quantitative risk value as well as the scientific interpretation of each risk. Because your vet will receive this report, you can go ask them more detailed questions. And also, you can also email us and ask more detailed questions. The reason that we include more information for veterinarians is because we want to give them more context. So for lower risk, case, low risk cases, our suggestion is to you know, do an annual screening test for normal breeds. But if you have uh, older dogs or high risk breeds, do that every three to six months, to, um, depending on the condition. If the results is moderate, um, our suggestion is to bring your dog back to your vet for more thorough physical exam to look for other clinical signs of cancer. Uh, and if there are, uh, definitely follow up with ultrasound or x-ray to confirm or deny cancer suspicion. But the, your dog is healthy otherwise, there's no other issues, no other clinical signs of cancer, then repeat this test in three months to see you know, where, where the trend goes. For high risk results, our suggestion is to, again, bring your dog back, back to your vet to follow up with ultrasound or x-ray um, to confirm or deny cancer suspicion. Our test is a screening test. And then um, the, these ultrasound x-rays are confirmatory diagnostic tests. <clears throat> we have three main use cases. The first is you know, healthy senior dogs that are um, you know, seven years and older as a part of senior wellness check. Our, again, our test is meant to be preventative and proactive um, in a sense that just like in human medicine, at a certain age, we do cancer screening tests like PSA for men or mammogram for women. And we do that not because we think we're going to have cancer. We just don't want to put ourselves beyond the eight ball. We want to find out early enough that we have more options and more treatment, um, successful treatment cases. And according to American Animal Hospital Association, half of all canine cancers are treatable if caught early enough. If you have the second use cases, if you have a high risk breeds such as Goldens, Boxers, Irish Wolfhounds, Mountain Bernies, our suggestion is to uh, screen early at a younger age, um, like five or six or as young as four, or any cases where cancer is suspected. This is a testimonial from a vet that we've been working very closely with over two years. And you know, I was just telling her that I'm glad that our test is making a difference at her practice. And she replied back saying, definitely changed how I practice medicine and went on to say some other good use cases as well as a really good feedback for our test. And I asked her if I can share her entire email as a testimonial, uh, and she said, absolutely. We also, uh, these are some of the organizations we've done uh, studies with on the canine side. And we also believe there's a human implication for our technology. So we have some small um, studies we're running with um, Dana-Farber and UT San Antonio as well. We launched Oncotech in 2019, and we have a fully functional lab at NC State. We are not affiliated with NC State, but we do work with some of their professors, and our test is available at NC State's CVM primary care unit. Our leadership advisory team consists of general practice veterinarians, veterinary oncologists, scientists, and entrepreneurs committed to pioneering early detection of cancer in companion animals from leading research universities. Our test is only for dogs right now, but we do have plans to start developing a test for cats, as well as we've detected other cancer types like TCC, um, prostate, bladder, liver, soft tissue sarcoma. But the reason we are not making claims for them yet is because we haven't run large enough sample size to publish a scientific paper, which we plan to do this year as well. There is no perfect cure for cancer, but early detection and treatment make all the difference. This is Cotton. His vet couldn't figure out what was going on with him, so she ran Oncotech tests. The result came back positive, so the vet did further diagnostic tests and found mast cell tumors. Cotton was able to get the care he needed right away. I'm happy to say he's living a healthy life with his family in North Carolina today. And this is one type of pet parents we've helped. People that want to go above and beyond. Uh, anything, everything to keep their dogs around as long as they can, including cancer treatment. But then you also have a second type of pet parents where 
they may not necessarily want to put their dogs through cancer treatment because their dog is older or they don't want to put them through chemotherapy or they're, they want to do more holistic vet uh, the, the, the approach. But knowing versus not knowing, your options are totally different. Like by knowing it, you can actually provide better quality of life by providing supplements, mushrooms, CBD oils, you know, pain management, palliative care, but not knowing your dog is just suffering. The third type of pet parents we've helped is people that just want to get peace of mind because they've lost their dog to cancer before in a, such a sudden tragic way. They don't want to repeat that experience. So they just want to get peace of mind that their dog is healthy and sound and they want to you know, keep them <clears throat> um, so that they can, they have more options should they ever find out. Each day we spend with our pets is a gift and we want to help pet parents everywhere get more of them to enjoy together. We are currently working with conventional vets, holistic vets, mobile vets, you know, really all spectrum of different vets. And, um, you know, some of the um, well-known holistic vets <clears throat> that you may be familiar with, you know, Dr. Ruth Roberts, uh, Dr. Rob Silver, um, hopefully, potentially soon we'll work with Dr. Judy Morgan. Um, we are, we'll be going to, we'll be presenting at um, the Healthy Dog Expo in New York, Albany with Dr. Kozer. Uh, so I know this is these names that you guys are all familiar with because, you know, it's, it's, it's a wholesome dog. You know, it's, it's you know, we want to, um, you know, take care of dogs in a in really natural, holistic way. Um, so, you know, we are at the start of a cancer screening revolution in companion animals. And, you know, we love for you to join our mission. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, that answered some of my questions, but I will just say um, <clears throat> if folks are on the East Coast and they uh, are around um, the first weekend in April, um, I'm excited that I actually get to meet you in person, Jen, because both Wendy and I will also be at the Healthy Dog Expo. Oh, so. is that right? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. And and I, I would also encourage anyone who can get to Albany, New York, um, that weekend, um, the Healthy Dog Expo was my first dog health or dog nutrition uh, conference, and it was awesome. Um, and so uh, I, um, you know, it was amazing. And I got to tell you, Chen, it's a real credit to you because uh, the events organizer, Dr. Lori Coger, is very discriminating in terms of like who <laughs> she invites. Um, sure. So that's that in itself is is high praise. So congratulations, that's Thank awesome. You. I I've heard that the selection um, process is quite uh, selective. <laughs> it, it really is. Like there yeah. are people that she hasn't invited, which I'm just like, what you know? Why? I want it like that. She should anyway. Um, Chen, can I just ask you to stop sharing so we can? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. No, no, no problem. Um, <clears throat> Okay, great. And Victoria said she lives in California and she's attended the last two Healthy Dog Expos. Uh, so that's awesome. And Victoria, hopefully we can meet you as well um, at the upcoming one. So um, excellent. So I just want to touch on a couple things um, from Chen's presentation, especially if this is your first time joining us or, um, you know, you're kind of new, which is a terrible term, but to the canine cancer world, a um, <clears throat> couple things uh, that I, I just want to highlight. So there are um, quite a few breeds who are at much higher risk just just by genetics alone, right, um, for having a higher risk of canine cancer. And um, Chen, you touched on four of kind of the five biggest uh, types of canine cancer. I think the only one that you didn't um, touch on was osteosarcoma, or was that sure. one of them? Okay. No, osteosarcoma is not one of the cancer types we've studied. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is we weren't able to get enough uh, samples for osteosarcoma sure. uh, yeah. when we were running studies. So it's, that's one of the types that we want to study in our next um, cohort of studies that we want to do. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, like anecdotally, we've, did, we've tested about two or three samples of osteosarcoma, but our test didn't work for osteosarcoma. Interesting. So, but that doesn't mean that you won. We just need to right. run larger sample size right. yeah. to really get a better idea. But, you know, just with the full transparency, um, the first three we ran, we didn't, we didn't um, catch it. 
Well, you know what? That just says there's more science to do, right? So job security is what I call it. So <laughs> um, I just want to share my screen um, and I'll go ahead and uh, put this link in the chat as soon as I'm done sharing it. But um, this is a, this is a, a graph for a chart table. It's a table. Sorry. It's late here on the West Coast and my I've been working all day. Um, not with dog, fun dog stuff. Um, so here are for for purebred dogs. Now, if you don't have a purebred dog, that what to me that just means is like if your dog has one of these um breeds as a dominant breed in their <clears throat> genetics, that also, you know, that's even more reason to use the Onco test. Um, or Onco Tech test to ensure that you um, you know know that you can do so. Like for instance, melanoma, which is the skin cancer, right? All breeds are prone to um, that alone. I you know the the breed that I have is not on this list, but technically you know under melanoma. So <clears throat> these are all terrible cancers. There's no such thing as a non-terrible cancer. Um, mast cell tumors lymphoma, uh, we talked about osteosarcoma, and then hemangiosarcoma, which is, again, they're all awful, um, but I know Wendy has also had experience with hemangiosarcoma, and again, there's just no good, there's no good uh, cancer, but knowledge is power, right? We know that, and so I would urge you to consider if you do have a dog who is either a purebred or has one of these <clears throat> breeds in their DNA as a dominant breed, um, not only should you be using, in my recommendation and our recommendation, uh, this test, but there's also preventative um, measures that you can take as a pet parent. You do not have to be a vet. You do not have to have a PhD or a DVM um, to be able to help your your dog um, lessen their chances of catching one of these terrible cancers. Um, I wanna uh, take a moment. So Diane asks, Jen, how many tests need to be run to come up with an accurate specific specificity and sensitivity numbers? That's a great question. Thank you, Diane. Sure, um, so in a, in a scientific setting, you need to have enough sample size to have a s statistical significance. So what we have in our published paper, we had 40 cancer samples um, and uh, maybe 20 non-cancer samples. So total of 60. And that was enough to have a statistical significance, but we know that more sample, the better, right? So since okay. then we've tested over 700 dogs uh, in, in, our, um, in our database. And we also, uh, we don't track, we can track all of them, but we've probably tracked about 400 cases, if you will. Wow. Um, and and based on those sample data, uh, we can, uh, our sensitivity is 83% and specificity is 96%. Okay, excellent. Thank it's you. a large enough sample size that we can confidently say, hey, this is, this is, um, this is accurate. Sure. Um, I, I noted earlier in your presentation, you talked about um, <clears throat> dogs as young as four years. Is there um, an age that's too young to to use this test for? Well, I mean, there's cancer doesn't discriminate age, right? It, it affects it just whether in human medicine or, or vet medicine, right? right. You know, the, unfortunately, you know, young people, young kids can get cancer too. And some same thing for young dogs, yeah. but, you know, but doesn't mean that you, it's almost cost and benefit analysis, right? Yes. Right. It's of course, it's a better to screen early, especially for like goldens and, you know, yeah. those sure. high risk breeds, but at what point is it becomes too expensive? Right. So we are, you know, honest recommendation is to start testing at seven years and older because okay. that's kind of considered senior age. Yep. Um, but we've I've seen I mean we get samples that are you know, four year old five year olds that with a cancer, yeah. right? So it's it really is up to the pet parents' willingness or you know their approach to their pet's health. So let's say this is my, like a, it's not a hypothetical. Okay, so my dog is three years old. Sure. <clears throat> 
She's a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, so she's not on this list, except, of course, melanoma is not breed specific. She's relatively healthy. <clears throat> she's on a, you know, I'm I'm a pet nutritionist, so I damn well better have her on a good diet. So, uh, you know, she's she's on uh, a daily mushroom regimen, right, that includes turkey tail. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and she's three. So... Is there any reason why at three I should I should screen her if I don't have any other indications? No, I don't think so. Uh, if if your dog is healthy otherwise and e eating well and you know just doesn't show any signs of cancer, then you know the right thing to do is start testing at seven. Is really okay. what's recommended. And so for a, a high risk breed like a Schnauzer or a Scottish Terrier or well. You're not able to screen for bladder cancer yet, right? You're working. That's yeah. one of the and ones we don't, you're testing. So bladder cancer we've detected before. The reason oh. we are not the reason we are not making claims for them is because we haven't again we haven't run large enough sample size okay. to have okay. a statistical significance. So okay. those high risk breeds, you know, we recommend you know as as young as five or five or six, okay. uh, and it's really up to the owners, you know, intent and their approach. Yeah. But, you know, you know, again, the larger breeds like, you know, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, right. Irish Sounds, probably starting at five right. is the right age. Um, but, you know, it really depends. The normal breeds, definitely seven, but high risk breeds, uh, you know, five, six. Okay, excellent. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting. And I will also just add like uh, a, a big one, which... Um, so, you know, thinking about some of the most popular breeds, so definitely golden retrievers, we've talked about that. Um, labs, if you have a dog that is a lab or part lab, absolutely. Um, looking at this list, German shepherds, um, flat coated retrievers, schnauzers, Boston terriers, English bulldogs, eagles, and boxers. So that's, and pugs. Those are all very popular. Um, Rot railers. <laughs> rot, yes. I'm not, interestingly enough, I'm not seeing, unless I'm missing it, any poodles on here. So I'm wondering how that affects kind of the doodles, right? Because the doodles are not just poodles, <laughs> right? And and one of the most popular doodle combinations is, of course, a golden yeah. doodle, which is a golden retriever. So super high risk with a poodle, which is low risk. Um, and so remind me, Chen, when people are filling out that registration, when they get their kit, they are putting the breed in, right? If they know it. Sure. Yeah. So we'll, it, it, during the activation process, it'll ask their typical information, their, yeah. uh, you know, the, the name, birthday, age, uh, the breed, um, uh, gender, uh, neuter, you know, spay, mm -hmm. um, yep. um, any health concerns that they're aware of, they can also upload their dog's picture. Mm -hmm. um, then again, um, they'll be asked to input their veterinarian information. And are you, have you had success catching other cancers? So I, I appreciate that you're asking about spay and neuter, especially as just over the last several years now, we've, we've seen an alarming um, correlation between dogs who have full spay or full neuter uh, versus say like an ovary sparing spray, right? Um, and mammary cancer, sure. right? So have have your tests yet detected like mammary cancers? Not yet. That's our that's one of the tests again types that we want to study in our next right. cohort. And the reason why we are kind of upbeat and up not up, you know that that we know that we can test these other cancer types is because we've been selected by one of the national uh, veterinary college of medicine in South Korea to study other cancer types with a much, with a large uh, number of sample size. Excellent. So the, most often the challenge is to collect many samples of a specific type cancer. Sure. Right? Um, and, you know, there are biobanks, uh, but, you know, there are not many of them actually have a large enough samples, but also they're expensive. Yeah. But because we are being selected um, by this um, college, veterinary college, uh, they provide us uh, free samples 
Um, so, you know, we are very much looking forward to using those samples to study other cancer types. That's that's incredible. Congratulations. That sounds like quite the feat. So yeah, that's amazing. Um, so apologies in advance. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, but um, Hyo asks, are any medications known to affect the accuracy of the results? Sure. So we've tested, uh, we don't have enough data to say 100% yay or nay, but we have tested dogs with medications or other disease, right? UT so another frequently asked question is, hey, how does UTI affect this result? So yeah. how does kidney disease or you yeah. know, diabetes, uh, so far, anecdotally, um, no uh, other diseases or medications have affected our results. That's great. Um, but doesn't mean that they won't. We just don't have enough data yet. But sure. we are collecting urine samples from Auburn University okay. uh, with their, you know, cause of vitamin and medicine of non-cancer disease samples. So, you know, hey, let's look at other diseases, the dogs with other diseases that are, you know, you know non-cancer, but and how is that affecting our results? Um, similarly, in human medicine, there are a group of scientists that are actually using similar science as we are to detect cancer in human medicine in Japan. And um, they've tested hu human urine samples with other diseases, other known human diseases, and, and they found that, that you know, it didn't affect their results. Fascinating. So, um, it, it, I think the, the, the nematodes that we're using, C. elegans, they are, they're very specific to sniffing out the cancerous metabolites in urine, yep. and that's yep. how what they're responding to. So um, out of, uh, so far, um, it's not affecting our results, uh, but again, we need to gather more data. Interesting, okay. Thank you for that. That's, that, that's I, I just think that's fascinating how this really is like a global project. I mean, that you're working um, with, you know, scientists. In I mean, South we are, and, so, I mean, our test now is available in Canada, Australia, Philippines, awesome. Spain, and we are speaking to a few folks in, in Portugal. Uh, we are selected as the, as a, one of the finalists at uh, one of the largest animal health um, conference in London in March. So um, I'll be presenting there and, and, and there's a lot of interest from Europe as well, because again, European, they they have a um, they have a very high uh, pet adoption rate too, and um, so it'd be interesting to um, you know sh showcase our technology and our product in Europe and see what the interest and demand um, is out there. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, I'm gonna bring in my colleague Wendy. Um, so <laughs> Wendy has used the test. I clearly have not, but it's because of Wendy that Chen is here tonight. And, um, she, she, you know, she was like, Julie Lynn, Julie Lynn, we got to talk about this test. We got to, in fact, when we were even talking about the creation of the wholesome dog, uh, Wendy was like, we got to have on Chen. So um, Wendy, I'm going to bring you in and share your experience. And then we're going to get to um, Hayo's other question. So. Okay. Um, I use this test. Um, I actually have two dogs that have had cancer. Um, I had one that I had a scare with. Um, and so I contacted Chen right away. Um, he expedited a test to me. Um, I did the urine sample first thing I did in the, in the morning, but you can do the urine sample at any time. Um, and had it in the mail in the afternoon and had my results within three to five days. And he's correct. It's extremely easy to use. I have a male dog actually now that has potential of having hermangiosarcoma and has a genetic line of it. So I'm thinking it's probably going to happen at some point, but um, I collected the urine sample. I used the pipette. I put it into the little sample container. I stuck it in the bag put it in the box and it was as just that easy. And then um, instead of having one-on-one -on -one interaction, you can go onto their website and you get the information immediately. So as soon as the test is ready and the results are available, you get an email, you can click on the email, you can see exactly what your risk level is. And then if you have further questions, you can contact them and they'll address the questions for you. Um, the reason why I found Chan a long time ago before I ever considered this was because Chan has a reason for doing this um, that is very 
near and dear to my heart. And I think that um, he should explain to everyone what started this project for him. Yeah, you, you think, you know what? I didn't even ask you that. Yes, yeah, so please, we'd love, please share with us. We'd love yeah, to sure, important. no. So about six years ago, my mom had breast cancer. Uh, and just like in any, you know, you know, woman of certain, you know, that age, you do mammogram every year. Again, not because you think you're gonna, you're gonna have a cancer, you just don't wanna put yourself behind the eight ball. And she did mammogram and they didn't find it. And this, and then, and, and few weeks, a few months or so later, she did an ultrasound of her kid, x-ray of her kidney. And that's how they found it. So they, they found it early enough that they were able to remove it and she went through chemotherapy and now she's cancer free and doing really well. But during that time, I had a chance to read a lot of cancer related, you know, journals and scientific papers uh, about uh, cancer detection, cancer diagnostics. And, and that's when I, when I came across a paper that talked, that talked about using C. elegans to detect cancer in human medicine. Um, so I thought, yeah, this is, this sounds too good to be true. Um, but, and, but I, I knew that there was a scientific, um, uh, paper about how dogs can sniff, sniff out cancer in human medicine. Right. So I thought maybe there's a correlation, like there's something has to do with the, you know, cancer cells produce this particular smell that's different from normal cells. And that's, if you can catch that, then this can be something that we can use as a screening test. And this is back in 2019. And. Back in 2019, there was no cancer screening tests available at all in veterinary medicine. Wow. Even, you know, it was then and it's still now, it, cancer is a leading cause of death. And I was kind of shocked that there was nothing available for dogs and cats. So that's when I decided to, okay, this, I think there's, we need to find a solution um, for companion animals. And that's how I started this business. What a what a fantastic story and and I'm so glad to hear that your mom is in remission and uh, wow what you know what I I gotta tell you just just as the wholesome dog um has come to be because of our own experiences like to me that's always when there's a personal you know reason behind it it's always that much more meaningful so Chen I think you should start every presentation from here on out with that story <laughs> before you get into the science start start with the story because sure. that. That is what pulls everyone in. Um, okay, so we're gonna, uh, Alyssa has an, a question. Um, she's asking, do you use a worm tracking software for the analysis? Alyssa, I would have never even thought to ask that question. So I love that. So Chen, tell us more. Sure, so we use uh, a software called MATLAB, which is a uh, widely used software in 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 the world of science, in, in, the, in, in, in biology science. And now the, the, we are actually developing a new method where in the past, we are um, literally measuring the migration behavior and literally manually counting where the worms were you know, migrating to. But now the new technology we're developing is we, are, we can actually measure the calcium activity, intense, intensity of calcium activity of an olfactory neuron in their brain. And based on how they respond, we can measure uh, their responsiveness. And then based on their responsiveness, we can categorize it as low, moderate, high risk. That's fascinating. Uh, Alyssa must be very smart, well, clearly, or she works in the scientific industry or something because uh, that question feels like it came out of left field, but clearly she knows what she's talking about. Yeah, so well done. Yeah. And, well and, done, and, Alyssa. Yeah. And potentially our goal is to use, you know, and this is something that our kind of our next project once we complete developing this is use AI uh, and machine learning to automate uh, automate the um, the analysis process. Okay. That's awesome. Yes, Alyssa says, yes, I work in the bioscience industry. <laughs> so there you go. Alyssa, you, could, you should come on and, and teach us a thing or two. Um, excellent. All right, so before we get any further, I do want to let you know that... Um, Chen was kind enough to pass, uh, create a special discount code just for us um, tonight. And so um, I'm going to put in the link here to the uh, to the Oncotech if you'd like to purchase your own. And then Chen, if I'm correct, the discount co code is wholesome. That's right, wholesome. Um, and that <clears throat> will get you 15% off. And Chen, we really appreciate that. Um, so I put the link there in the chat along and the code is wholesome, all one word, just wholesome, not the wholesome dog, just wholesome. 
Um, and Amanda says, yes, thank you for pioneering this screening test for our companion dogs. I work in human cancer screening and early detection programs, and unfortunately, canine cancer impacted my life greatly. I was so frustrated in 2022 when I was going through the diagnosis with my dog of how little studies were out there in the canine cancer world. Mm -hmm. Wendy, I know, relates deeply to that, and I'm sure many others here do as well. Um, so, um, Chen, if I, I'm, we didn't really plan this out, but I'm going to um, talk a little bit about turkey tail mushroom, and I would encourage you to weigh in. So I, I'm going to, as a canine nutritionist, um, I'm going to share what, what I know from studies um, and why, even though I have a dog breed that is not prone to cancer, she will always be on turkey tail mushrooms um, for the rest of her life and, and any future dogs I have as well. So um, we know both in human, and again, Chen, feel free to pipe in or correct me at any point if you need to, because you're the authority on this. Um, we know that in both human and canine um, medicine, turkey tail mushroom, which is just a mushroom, it grows on the side of a tree, um, or anything that's decomposing as mushrooms do. And it looks like a turkey tail. It has nothing to do with turkeys other than it looks like a turkey tail. Um, it has been shown to be one of the most effective preventative measures, like natural preventative measures, um, both as a, as a cancer preventative, as well as a cancer retardant. And if you've not yet watched it yet, Wendy and I both highly recommend there's a documentary and I never remember if it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime, but I think you can just Google it. And it's called Fantastic Fungi. Um, and maybe if Wendy has a free moment, she'll share a link to it. Uh, highly recommend it. So they're mostly talking about mushrooms in the human sense and the human application, but we also know this to be true of dogs. Um, so you, you may have heard earlier, I referenced Scottish Terriers um, or Scotty Dogs as we know them. Scotty, um, Scotties are, have a highly, uh, one of the highest, um, rates of bladder cancer and, um, it's, it's insanely high. And they did a study in Scotties that basically, um, actually, you know what? I'm stop. I'm confusing the Scotty study with orange vegetables. Wendy is what I'm confusing. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. There's other studies <laughs> around turkey tail mushrooms specifically, I forget which breeds, um, but we do know that when you add turkey tail mushrooms um, to your dog's diet, and no, you don't actually have to feed them the mushroom. Um, we're we're going to show you some, some tricks for, for supplementation. Um, <clears throat> but particularly if you have a dog that is one of those breeds that is predisposed to high rates of cancer, um, turkey tail mushroom can be incredibly effective is just overall good for immune support and health anyway. Um, so, okay. Wendy has to take off. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so Chen, do you want to weigh in at all about, uh, turkey tail? Oh, I don't. So I don't, I'm not an expert in, in nope. uh, turkey I, I, tail. I'm not expert. asking to be on uh, this one, just on but, Uncle Tech. Yeah, but we are, uh, we are just, work, you know, we are working with the real mushrooms. Uh, they're one of the pioneers in you know the mushroom um, in both human and pets, uh, and we are hopefully uh, we are gonna discuss next week how we're gonna collaborate together. Um, awesome. So I, we I do know that you know mushroom as a supplements can definitely help with the cancer. Yeah, and so um, it's you know I will also say as a nutritionist, it's never too late to give your dog a uh, turkey tail, even if your dog has been. Um, already diagnosed. Um, in two uh, two weeks, yes, in two weeks' time, we will have Dr. Trina Haza. Um, Chen, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dr. Trina. Yeah, probably are. She is one of four um, veterinary or integrative and holistic veterinary oncologists in the country, in the U.S. here. And um, she is fantastic, and she will talk more about turkey tail mushroom. Um, but I highly recommend it. Real Mushrooms is an excellent brand. Um, another one that both um, Wendy and I use not only with our dogs, um, but myself. Um, and then I have parents who are in their 70s. And my dad actually um, 
is a Vietnam War vet who was exposed to Agent Orange, uh, which has now been, you know, 50 years later, found to be a carcinogen. And, and as a result, he himself um, has battled melanoma off and on to the point where he, you know, not a year goes by that he doesn't have to have some sort of spot <clears throat> that becomes cancerous removed. So I actually have my entire family on mushrooms. <laughs> you know, solely for, for the immune support and the, the cancer retardant. Um, this is a, a product that we recommend. And if you're, um, they, they're using a similar um, setup to the one that Real Mushrooms uses. I don't have a, um, I don't have a code for Real Mushrooms, but I do have one for uh, this product. It's called Vitality by CBD Dog Health. And the code is, um, the wholesome dog. I'm just putting it in the chat here. I want to make sure I'm copying it correctly. Uh, the wholesome dog 10. Um, if anyone's looking, and that vitality um, that I linked to does contain a uh, turkey tail. Uh, there's a number of great turkey tail um, and mushroom supplements out there, but we know that that is a, a very effective um, preventative supplement that you can give your dog and yourself. And I will say the, both the, the real mushrooms and the CBD dog health, all those products are human grade. So you can actually share it with your animal. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if it's good enough for your dog, it should be good enough for you. Right. That's, that's how I feel. Um, all right. So what other questions do we have for Chen? It looks like we have some really smart people in the room. Um, who are fellow uh, scientists, and and I think that's fantastic. Um, Chen, is there anything else you want to share about Oncotact? Um, so, I mean, there are other options. So, you know, one thing that I didn't mention is there are um, there are other cancer screening tests that are available. Um, but you know, there's you know the ones that's been around the longest is the BRAF test, which is a bladder prostate cancer test. Uh, which is developed by one of professors uh, at NC State, Dr. Matthew Breen, who we come oh, nice. as, as a uh, friend and advisor for us. Um, and then, uh, so only two urine cancer screening tests that I'm aware of is BRAF test and Oncotec test. And we are the only multi-cancer detection test. And we also, we are the only one that's available direct to consumer. Uh, oh, and then really? We have, hey, we are the only one that wow. can actually do it uh, at home and then send it to our lab. And then there are two other blood tests, uh, PET-DX, K9, and then there's a Volutions and UQ test. And those are blood tests. And in, in, you know, one of the things that early on we wanted to highlight was, you know, we wanted to make it as you know, accessible and convenient and affordable for pet parents. Um, and you know, because of, you know, if, if you have to draw a large amount of blood, at the hospitals, it's certainly yeah. not good for your dog, especially if you have smaller dogs. But also, yeah. if, you know, if you can do it at the comfort of a home, just collect some more urine sample at home. And um, we thought that would be it would be a just game changer. And I think Wendy mentioned it a little bit uh, while she was speaking. We early on we thought that okay, urine collection at home is gonna be our biggest friction point, right? You know, because so many people haven't collected urine at home, and they're right. like. How do I do? Like, like that was like the kind of the most frequently asked questions. Like, yeah. I, I never collect the urine for my dog. Like, I always take my you know dog to my vet. Right. So we thought really hard and long about okay, how can we make this process easy and simple for pet parents? Yeah. So that's why we you know put together a uh, all the tools you need. Like, if you're gonna if you're thinking, imagine yourself you know chasing your dog trying to collect some urine while they're you know peeing. I mean, it, it ain't gonna happen, right? So you know, no, it's have, not. You're right. It's, you it's have instructional videos, and then you know, depending on if you have a female or male dog, and you need a you know paper boat to collect urine in, uh, and it can be fresh, you know, free catch, and then use the pipette to put in a you know preservative tube, and then you know put in the biohazard bag, and you know use the same box to send it back to us. So you know, we maybe we may had one or two um, customers reach out to us and saying like you know, I'm having a hard time, but, you know, nine out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, no issues collecting urine at home. 
You know, I'm I'm actually really glad you brought that up because I will say as as the pet parent of a small female dog, meaning she squats, right, versus lifting a leg, and being the fact that she only weighs 15 pounds, she's very close to the ground. She has short legs, right? Um, once I have observed a vet tech trying to catch a, a, a sample and I thought, oh my God. But then when I saw your kit and yeah. that, what do, you, what do you call it? A boat? Yeah. Paper boat. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, I could actually do that because, you yeah. know, when, when Wendy was telling me it was urine, I was like, oh no, I don't actually want to chase my dog and try and get a urine sample. But then I saw your kit and I was like, no, 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 I could totally do that. So yeah. If I can do it with a female small dog that's very close to the ground, meaning there's not a lot of clearance right between the dog and the ground, um, I I feel confident that even I could collect urine. <laughs> and, and all we need is one or two mil of urine, which is a very small amount. So it's not like you have to collect, you know, a right. lot, lot, lot of it. Yeah. Right. Victoria says that she's used a kitchen ladle. See, uh, I would never even thought see, of it. That's, that's, that's another secret too, that, you know, the, the ladle, using ladle to collect urine is like the, you know, a lot of people actually do that. So they, you know, a lot of, you know, pet owners actually have like the, the their dog urine ladle specific <laughs> um, to, to catch the urine. Um, but that that's that's actually you know done quite frequently. But we couldn't you know we couldn't find a folding <laughs> ladle that we can include in our kit. So we had yeah. you know, so the next best option was to put uh, paper boats. That's awesome. No, no, I I see. This is what I love about this work is you never know. Like, did I come out here tonight thinking I was going to have a conversation about kitchen yeah. ladles for collecting dog <laughs> urine? <laughs> that's excellent. Uh, and apparently we're not the only ones. So, and then Diane says, it's really not that hard to do a free catch. That's probably true. It's probably true. It seems more intimidating than it is. So, um, this has been excellent. So Chen, anything else you want to share with us? Um, no, I'm, you know, thank again, thanks for having me. I know, um, cancer affects more, you know, pet parents than any other disease and, um, and again, like I, like I said earlier, you know, just a lot of pet owners just don't know that there's a tool like this now no. you know, that it exists. So yeah. getting the word out, you know, the building awareness and, you know, educating about the product is what we are trying to do. And, um, again, if anyone has any questions, you know, please email us. We, we have a, you know, chat, uh, on our website. There are a lot of information on our website as well. And, you know, I love to, um, you know, I, I, our goal is to get this product on the hands of as many pet parents as possible so they can help their pets and not get, you know, blindsided by, you know, cancer that once, once, once you find out it goes down really quickly. It does. And, and if anyone's ever lost a dog, you know, the pain and you know that you never want anyone else to go through that. And, you know, those of us who've lost a dog, we, we kill for, you know, another week, month, year, whatever. So thank you. Um, you're, you're doing some amazing work on behalf of pet parents and we really appreciate that. Right. Um, before we let you go tonight, um, folks, I just want to share with you, as I mentioned at the top of the class, um, this is the first in a series of our Canine Cancer Awareness Month. And so I just want to share with you um, a few of our upcoming classes in this um, in this series. So, uh, of course, we had tonight's course. Next week, we're going to have uh, internationally renowned uh, canine herbalist Rita Hogan. She'll be talking about more about mushrooms, but uh, well, not actually mushrooms because mushrooms will be in two weeks from from next week. So, we'll be talking about herbs and how you can naturally support your dog's immune system. We know that a healthy, strong immune system is one of the best defenses against cancer. Um, two weeks, uh, from now we will have that conversation with Dr. Trina Hazah, who is just amazing. Also met her first at the Healthy Dog Expo last year, Chen. Uh, uh, then three weeks from now, uh, we will have plant and, uh, hemp educator and expert Angela Ardolino of CBD Dog Health. We'll be talking about how hemp and fungi actually kill cancer. And then at the... On leap year day, on the leap day, we will be um, spotlighting three small businesses um, across the country who carry some of our favorite 
cancer uh, supplements and preventatives. Um, and that will be a great opportunity to find um, some retailers who, you know, see how they support pet parents and, and help you find, you know, the exact right product for you. Um, also just wanna let you know that if you go to our resources page, um, <clears throat> we have curated an amazing list here of not only as pet nutritionists, what um, meets our high standards, which let me tell you is pretty high, um, but also um, herbal and natural supplements. Um, and you will see that on here, um, health and behavioral professionals that you can follow, um, educational events, including conferences, there's the Healthy Dog Expo. Um, so we have all sorts of resources. They are all free for you. If you have questions, um, you can always reach out to us directly. We're, we're here to help you. Um, so Chen, thank you so much. Um, Oncotex on the list. We're going to make sure it stays there. Um, I look forward to meeting you in April and um, on behalf of everyone and myself and Wendy, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.